So as a shaman in my work, I work with all types of people, and I work with different people in their fields because what happens is, what I, this is something that happened to me. I was in the jungle, and I was looking at a tree, and I was looking at a jaguar, and I was looking at the howler monkeys, and I said to myself, wow, they know who they are. They're exactly what they are. You don't see the jaguar trying to be a horse or trying to be a war pig. You don't see an apple tree trying to be a lemon tree. Everything is exactly as it is. And then I started to look at us as a species, as people on a planet that are thriving for this evolution, this process of evolution. How can we truly evolve if we're not willing to be who we really are? Our blueprint, what we are. We find so many excuses and lies that we constantly continue to tell ourselves because we want to be something else or be someone else when in fact there is only one you and no one has your perception or idea of who you are but you. So it doesn't really matter what other people think because you don't know where they are in their evolution and what they're thinking about and what their perception is. Yet people change themselves constantly. Like saying that they want to be something else, and this robs us of the richness of each individual person. So when I started meeting with all these different world leaders and shamans and monks and gurus from India and so forth, we started getting into this conversation and they said, well, the people, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to know that. That's what we know. We, they don't want to know that. They're conflicting. They, they're combative. I said, oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> I like that. I'm not going to be the shaman who sits back and sits under a tree and doles out wisdom to you. And you know, and and where where we're needed the most right now is in the metropolitan cities. We're needed where people are in business, where people are actually making changes in the world by the way they think and the way they act. So my focus in my life, since I was a kid, I was chosen as a shaman when I was five years old by my great grandmother, who was a medicine woman. She chose me as her successor. During that process of being chosen, when you're a kid and you know, you're like playing with toys and you have these family members around you telling you, you're the one that she spoke about, you're the one who has to train and do all this training, I'm like, I just wanna be a kid. I just wanna play, I wanna have fun. But as what happened was, when I got into kindergarten, this is when it hit me. It hit me that something was wrong. Something was really off. And what was off was that we were being put through this vetting system. It wasn't like I was in school and I was able to really express myself as I am, as myself, and learn the qualities of education that is necessary for who I am. I was being told what to be educated in, and I was being told how to think, and I was put into a domestication just like an animal is being domesticated when they're told, yes, no, this is bad, this is good. And it started to create a distortion in the way I was looking at things. I started believing if you're good, you get the presence, it's wonderful, you get love, and if you're bad, you don't. So I was watching all these people change themselves constantly to get to that place of being always good, getting always love, being liked. I didn't wanna be that person. And I watched my friends and people that I was in, as a kid playing with starting to morph into that person, starting to change their true selves so they can get love. A quality which is so completely disconnected from their own inner truth. And so as a kid, I would ask my mom, why is this happening? And she says, choose your path as a shaman and you will be able to help these people. So I did. So as I got older, I started working um, towards that path. My first teacher was Princess Susan Radish. I was taken in by a royal family. And they began to teach me, and then I started working with other people from India and from all over the world, studying with indigenous cultures, working with doctors. But I didn't want the shamanism, because when people think shamanism, they think, oh, I should be wearing like feathers and hats and bones and you know, dancing under a tree. That's all nice and that's all fairy tellish. But the truth of the matter is, shamanism is based on the idea that you live in your authenticity and you honor your truth as you are living in that place from your heart. 
regardless if you dance under a tree or not, if you pray or if you bow to Mecca or you do any of these things. So I decided to study world religion, I studied philosophy, and I studied science because I wanted to be able to bring the knowledge that I had and that I learned from my elders into the Western world, into the world where people are living their lives, having children, being doctors, going to all of these different areas that shamans don't really step into. So since then, it's been wonderful because I've got to work with a lot of doctors, I've got to bring my theories of practice, I've got to do a lot of different scientific tests to show other doctors. I work in Turkey right now, where I work at a brain degen uh, degenerative center with three doctors and three psychotherapists. They show me their files, I go over their files, and I start looking at things from the areas that they're not looking at. And one of the things that I find the most is the inauthenticity, the inauthentic nature of human beings. Being here in Iceland, it's been really amazing. It's my second time here. The first time I got here, I, the moment I got off an airplane, I went right to a radio station. And the guy looks at me and he says, what have you gathered since you've been here? I said, I just got off the airplane. <laughs> he goes, I understand, Shaman, but what is it that you see? I said, well, do you want me to see what I've seen so far since I walked down the street and got here to your radio station? He said, yes. I said, the people have so much power. They're so capable of so much creativity, yet they hide, they lie, they judge, they compare. So I started looking at these things. And he started asking me, well, what is it that you see? I said, why are people walking around in shame? Why are people hiding themselves from the truth? Why are they gossiping? Why are they doing these things that take them away from their center and not allow them to be the powerful, brilliant presence that they are? And, he, and the two guys in the radio station was like, you're right. And it's not about me being right. It's not about me being even a shaman. It's about the bigger picture. It's about our evolution. You know, we can build cell phones, computers, put things into outer space, but if we keep destroying ourselves, our people, our resources, and not paying attention to how we are treating ourselves, none of that means nothing. 